Welcome to the best exotic Marigold Hotel. He is the perfect namesake. He's just a ball of energy, untamed, this kind of flamboyant entrepreneur who has this big vision to, you know, outsource the elderly to India. And he's got this beautiful place that he wants to turn into a care home. And with the aid of a little, a lot of Photoshop, he manages to rope in those guys. And uh, yeah, madness ensues. Come and spend your autumn years in an Indian palace. Arches and canopied balconies. It's a luxury development where all the residents are in their golden years. Like the Costa Brava. Yeah, but with more elephants. She uh, has had ostensibly a happy marriage. And then her husband dies. She suddenly realizes, in actual fact, that she hasn't got much, many resources left. She hasn't got much money. And sees the advertisement for um, the, the Marigold Hotel and thinks she'll take a great leap of faith and a leap in the dark and, and go. Are you all right? I just want a glass of water. That was a gin and tonic. I know that now. I've worked with everybody on it. I worked with Celia. I worked with Penelope. I worked with Ronnie Pickup. Tom, Max, everybody. There was a slight um, shortcut thing that you can do because you know somebody very well. The big JD. I remember saying something because we, our first dinner we went together, um, I was trying to be more eloquent and not sound like a harrow boy, like, yo, JD, bro. I mean, somebody with more energy and more verve and more enthusiasm would be very, very hard to find. I remember we were just, someone asked me a question, I don't know what it was, and I was like, I tend not to do that. And that's the wrong way of saying this. Okay, anyway, uh, it was meant to be funny, but she just thought it was the funniest thing in the world. She's like, you tend not to. Ah! Um, and it was just so embarrassing. He kind of energized us all, which is what he does in the film. They're all wonderful and so giving and, and gracious. Um, I was really lucky. <laughs> he coughed, I saw him he cough. Moved. He's alive. Did, did I nod off? <laughs> 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 he did not either. <laughs> <laughs> that. I'm in health. I've always wanted to be an actor. Um, I think it just comes from that was the only thing I was really good at in school, and that's what I got attention from my peers from was being stupid and funny and um, entertaining, you could say. When I went into the theatre in 1957, uh, there were lots of theatres that you could go to reps and things like that. You could see other actors and see, understand how to do things and watch and see what you thought worked and what didn't work. I didn't really have the means or the know-how to get into the right acting schools and things. And I was 16 when my mother really was my driving force. And she saw this audition in a newspaper and dragged me along. And I got this show called Skins. Um, and it was very lucky. Don't get disheartened. That's what I would say. Just keep on going. If it is the one thing you want to do, just somehow keep on going. A lot of it's luck, because there's so many talented people out there that don't get their shot or their due. But you just got to keep, you know, keep, keep trying. It's so hard, because there are now, you know, not so many theatres. There's, there are now fewer places where you can go and actually learn and make a few mistakes and learn from them. When you least expect it, I think that's when it happens. Uh, so try not to expect it. <laughs> that doesn't make sense. Do it. Everything will be all right in the end. So if it is not all right, it is not yet the end. It's just